through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 173. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to be talking about Jonah Hill. Yes. In honor of the watch. Mm -hmm. Some of us are more enthusiastic than others, or maybe some of us are just wishful. I, I don't know. You you make the call on that one. Yeah, some wishful, sarc cynical, you know, uh, two sides of the same coin, I guess. That being said, you know, we're going to do sort of an interesting selection of Jonah Hill's career. Mm -hmm. And we're going to skip over a, f a couple of those first few smaller roles, like, you know, his role in The 40-Year-Old Virgin. Mm -hmm. Very funny, but, yes. you know, you know, a minute or so yeah. in the yeah. entire movie. So, he ends up a lot of or, back background -y side. Yes. Or like Grandma's Boy again, mm -hmm. you know, funny in it, but only in yeah. it for a few minutes. So yeah. we're going to skip right to one of the first sort of significant roles mm -hmm. he had, which was in the college comedy, mm. Accepted. Yes. Starring Justin Long and Blake uh, yes. Lively, which is funny to think about because, you yeah. know, back then <laughs> yeah, they she, were kind of... They were of, both nobodies? I would say nobodies, but they're definitely... They would just, definitely B-list. Yeah. They, <laughs> if, if that. C. Yeah. I mean, they're <laughs> definitely not to the level they yes, are today, which definitely. is A-list people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's the story about a kid, or group of kids, I should say, mm -hmm. who uh, are not accepted by any of the colleges they apply to, and so yes. they create a Fake fictional one. college, mm -hmm. Harmon University, um, <laughs> South Harmon okay. University, I believe. Uh, South Harmon University, or South Harmon Institute of Technology, that's right. Even it's better. An acronym of shit. Ah. That's part of the joke in the movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Ah, so witty. Yes. And so, you know, part of it's, you know, you know, ha creating this fictional college to fool the parents, mm -hmm. and then at the same time, you know, they ultimately end up learning from oh, each other, and it actually amazing. works out. Yeah. What a surprise. It's, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, it's not the greatest comedy, but I like the the good nature aspect mm -hmm. of it and you know justin long is a pretty charming guy yeah, he's very likable. uh columbus short a very likable guy jonah hill is sort of he's not unlikable in the movie he's sort mm -hmm. of the straight man in the movie which is kind gotcha. of funny to think about yeah. with jonah hill yeah um interesting but it's 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 a decent movie i'll say that it's a decent movie you know it's not going to be like first top tier mm -hmm. college comedies yeah. you're going to see but I, I enjoyed it quite a bit you know and it got a couple of teen choice awards it's funny when we talked about Channing Tatum and mm -hmm. like all the teen choice award yeah. nominations got Jonah Hill is very similar he's got mm -hmm. a lot of teen choice award nominations that's Seems appropriate now that they were in 21 Jump yeah. Street together because yeah. both of them are such teen choice uh -huh. uh, aficionados. So, you know, he got a, a, a teen choice uh, nomination for Scream, hmm. which I guess he did have a fairly good Scream in the movie, but uh, bizarre, bizarre. That's a very weird thing to yeah. have. A award it, for yeah and the film was directed by steve pink who really doesn't have a heck of a lot of noteworthy credits to his name mm -hmm. he did hot tub time machine okay and he's doing the toxic avenger remake mm. so i don't know where that means he comes down i'm gonna take a wild guess and guess, say that this remake isn't done by trauma i don't know actually that's a good question but Rob, uh, they probably have some sort of involvement, you would think. I mean, they probably own the rights to it. Yeah. I can't imagine that there's like... But it's not going to be a trauma film, so... No, Ugh. it's probably not going to be a trauma film. It's probably going to be more <sighs> like... gave me a sad, Spencer. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, something like that. No! Yeah. Toxie! But, you know, uh, again, you know, not only did Jonah Hill get nominated for a Teen Choice mm. Award, Justin Long got nominated mm. for a Breakout Teen Choice Award. Nice. So, you know, it's... It's it's a it's a funnish film, sort of sort of like uh, Camp Nowhere. Kind of gotcha. reminds me of Camp Nowhere, okay. except in college, at a so university. Camp college Nowhere. Yes, we'll go, we'll go with that. <laughs> sure. I, I'll, I will, or we could just call accepted because I will it's accept. Named. Ended that. <laughs> oh oh, play on words. That's what we do on the MacGuffin. We're witty you, you, like that. You, you can just kill us. So it's fine. I was going to do my best to try and avoid talking about this since we talk about it so much on mm -hmm. the MacGuffin, but yeah. I was kind of having trouble figuring out that eighth film we were mm. going to talk about mm -hmm. in terms of Jonah Hill, and finally I was like, you know, it's kind of hard to talk about Jonah Hill yeah. and just gloss over Superbad. Super yeah. Superbad is obviously the film that really 
burst him onto mm-hmm. the scene. Um, yeah, went from a background apatow, yeah. semi regular to a full on front runner. Yes, I mean this is the film that came out the same year as Knocked at Knocked Up. Mm-hmm. Knocked, out, knocked Up. Um, I so they came out the same year. So crazy. Yeah, it was a great year for him. It's funny to think about because it's sort of like, oh yeah, this is that other mm-hmm. Apatow film that came yeah. out. And I mean, in a lot of people's minds, this is probably the superior of yes. the films. Yes, I, was, um, I would agree with that. But it was one of sort of the ones that was not, I mean, given the success of 40 Virgin, I think it was probably the lesser hyped one coming oh, out yeah. at this point. Definitely. This, this was the one that was written by Evan Goldberg mm-hmm. and... Um, Seth, Seth Rogen, Rogen yep, starting all, their partnership. Who also is in it. Um, originally written to be Seth Rogen as the main role, mm-hmm. played by Jonah Hill. Yes. Um, ultimately felt like he was too old, mm-hmm. and Jonah Hill came and slipped in. I think fantastic. In fact, yeah. you know, it's funny to think about um, in terms of their entire careers. I probably like Jonah Hill more than Seth Rogen. I mean, I got to be hmm. honest. Like, if I if I compare film to film, generally, like I think for the most part, I like. Jonah Hill films much more than I like Seth Rogen films. Hmm. Just I I don't know if I'd agree with that, but that's interesting. I I mean I, I, I mean don't get me wrong, Seth Rogen's definitely had a few stinkers that really make it hard to fight for him, but at the same time. I I, th- I think he had a period where he had a lot of good roles, but mm-hmm. that was like a short period and then you throw mm-hmm. in like, you know, a few older projects and ev- like the last five years or whatever though, it's like what else has he done? What have you done for me lately? L- a lot of stuff behind the camera. Yeah, I think, you know, he's done a lot of stuff in front of the camera, too, that just hasn't been good. All right, fair enough. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, In terms of, you know, the film, it's obviously about the friendship Mm -hmm. between Michael Cera and Jonah Hill's characters. I think they had... Last day of school, I believe, right? Or something um, like that. Yes. Or a party near the end of graduation. Yeah, I think it's just near the end. Um, And I think just the the chemistry between Mm -hmm. Michael Cera and Jonah Hill is just fantastic. I think that was probably the thing that elevated the film, in addition to Christopher Miss Plot. Yes, Plus, yes. Who was wonderful as McLovin. McLovin. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, definitely a scene stealing kind of role. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, everybody essentially was nominated for Teen Choice Awards, hmm. I believe, for this. You know, um, it was nominated for comedy. You know, Jonah Hill was nominated for comedy. Michael Sarah was nominated for comedy. Michael Sarah was nominated for Breakout uh, Male. You mm. know, Christopher mm-hmm. Mintz was nominated. It was directed by Greg Matola. Ah, uh, yes. Who, big fans of on the podcast Mm -hmm. you know adventureland was wonderful paul was meh it had its moments i liked paul it was currently directing uh newsroom episodes yeah i mean he's big into tv Mm -hmm. you know undeclared and Mm -hmm. um all that stuff um Oh, definitely, definitely a great uh, project. I, I got to give Seth Rogen credit, though. Him and Bill Hader and their supporting oh, roles man, of yeah. police officers were absolutely fantastic. Yeah. You know, this is, again, you know, around the time I started to have a renaissance with Bill Hader. Mm. I mean, he mm-hmm. everything yeah. he was <laughs> yeah. in was just great. I mean, yeah, him and Kristen Wiig just started, like, right around here was the point where I sort of became enamored with the two of them. Mm-hmm. And ever since then, I'm just, like, always like, yeah. what, are, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was... Post Hot Rod, basically, mm, you know, okay. going on. Yeah, not that it was bad in Hot Rod. I just hate that film, so <laughs> that doesn't help me. Uh, sort of the continuation of you know the prolific mm-hmm. Jonah Hill comedic chops. Yeah, uh, he he had a small role in Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yes, which that's right. Parlayed into a bigger but different mm-hmm. part in Get Him to the Greek. Mm-hmm. Despite them being both about all the snow, the yes. Russell Brand character, yes, or yes. both involving Russell yeah. Brand's character. Um, and both of them involving him being a super fan. Joe yeah, Hill. that's true. He was a super fan Even of both of them, but they are not the same super fan. True. Uh, in Get Him to the Greek, he plays a music executive mm-hmm. who is tasked with getting uh, Russell Brand's character yes. to this theater in LA for a reunion from England performance or something. Yeah. For like a, a 10th anniversary yeah. performance of, um, uh, live at the Greek, yes. I believe was the yeah. album, mm-hmm. which was much beloved. He's this beloved rock star who's fallen upon hard mm-hmm. times. Not an uncommon idea. <laughs> um, again, you know, this is one of those instances of like a great partnership drive yeah. in this movie Definitely. with some great supporting roles. I mean, Russell Brand and Jonah Hill's chemistry is wonderful. They're, tremendously good at playing off of each other <laughs> and but you got to give a lot of credit to people like sean combs mm-hmm. p diddy yes. he was hilarious yeah, he's in a his really smaller... great like 
almost like was foiled to both the main oh, totally. characters. And for for a guy who you know whose forte is not necessarily acting, yeah. he he is amazing comedic <laughs> timing. Like yeah. he really, I mean, I mean, this is one of those instances where you talk about like music videos uh -huh. having a great way of training musicians to be actors mm -hmm. in terms of getting timing down precisely yeah. and he's great and I, I i mean i think aldous snow is a a very entertaining character they really there's create... a reason that they were able to make an entire movie well i mean them. a russell brown is so charming yeah period but and... they also create a real world around this guy you know mm -hmm. they they had his ex-wife mm -hmm. rose byrne who's great in her role in it love rose byrne. uh they had his kid they created mm -hmm. you know fictional music for him fictional music videos mm -hmm. like all sorts of stuff that just really helped create this world that it was set in it was just it was a lot of fun and you mm -hmm. know it's directed by nicholas stoller who did forgetting sarah marshall so there's yes. good continuity there mm -hmm. and he's worked uh extensively with jason siegel those yeah. sort of his um i don't know what you call him um partner yeah because they did, they did the five-year engagement as well, which came out this mm -hmm. year. So, um, and he was involved with the business Muppets, associate, yeah, writing partner, <laughs> something like that. Who, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, <laughs> I mean, it, Get him the Greek is great. I was very surprised by it. It was much more entertaining. Than totally, I it, was it, was one, it, was, it was one of the funnier years of 2010. Mm -hmm. Definitely one of the more interesting films. Mm -hmm. And again, a slew of Teen Choice Awards. Uh, again, best comedy, best actor, comedy, Russell Brand. Same with Jonah Hill, um, best hizzy fit, Sean Combs, <laughs> best movie mm -hmm. fight, Sean Combs, mm. Jonah Hill, Russell Brand, just uh, best uh, lip lock, Russell Brand, Jonah Hill. Yes. Like again, like another um, Weird, teen choice yeah. award favorite, Jonah Hill. Uh -huh. like, again, he just yeah. gets slew and slew of praise <laughs> there, so... He writes that right, that good line of looking young, but, you know, still being able to mm -hmm. get adult roles. Yep. And again, you know, he's really made his um, name doing comedies, mm -hmm. but I personally think some of his most interesting parts were his serious roles. Yes. I really enjoyed them. Uh, one of such was the Duplass brothers, Cyrus, which is the story of um, a divorcee. Mm -hmm. Divorcee? What do you call a male divorce? Divorcee? Divorcee. I, I don't know. Let's go uh, divorcee. <laughs> divorcee. Uh, played by John C. Riley. Love who John C. Riley. Falls for this wonderful woman, mm -hmm. played by Marissa Tomei, who he ultimately discovers has this quirky and frustrating <laughs> yeah. son. Yes, who um, lives at home with Marissa Tomei. Yes. And, you know, it's, it's so interesting because it's, I mean, he's... Yeah, I mean, Jonah Hill has funny moments in the mm -hmm. movie, but yes. it's his quirkiness as this character that really sets him to be so interesting in the mm -hmm. film. Because he's very serious, and some of the stuff he does that comes across as funny isn't necessarily... Well, I mean, yeah. it starts as a good sort of natured relationship mm -hmm. with John C. Riley, but then it quickly becomes um, clear that he has this sort of unhealthy <laughs> attachment to Marissa Tomei as yes. his mom. Yes. Um, I think it comes a little darker than Yeah. yeah. And it, it I mean it's not like a, a horror film or anything yeah. like that, but it's like it's essentially he puts himself as sort of like it's either him or me. Yeah. And it's really interesting to sort of see it's an all tomato. Yeah, it's sort of funny to see the back and forth between Jonah Hill mm -hmm. and John C. Riley as they both sort of try and win the girl. Mm -hmm. And the Duplass brothers are just such talented directors. They have such a, such an innate sort of um, perception of human mm -hmm. emotions. Yeah, like especially human like dialogue back and forth. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's sort of like I ne I haven't necessarily been in a similar circumstance where I'm like competing <laughs> yeah. with yeah. my girlfriend's yeah. son <laughs> for attention, but it's so honest and so real that I could absolutely see myself. Going through yes. similar situations, yeah. like you know, on either side, re yeah. realistically totally, speaking. Totally. I mean, eh, look, more on John C. Riley, less on John. Uh, <laughs> you didn't have night terrors, Spencer. <laughs> I, I can't see myself with this like weird music musical thing. I can, I can, I can see can you, you? Right. dropping the bass. Maybe, maybe <laughs> dropping the bass, playing the bass. Um, but you know, it's got great supporting characters mm -hmm. too: Catherine Keener, Matt Walsh, right. favorite of the the podcast. Um, 
It got an Indie Spirit Award nomination for John C. Ry uh, John C. Riley. Um, well deserved. Well deserved. Really, really incredible role for him. And this is the sort of first real mainstream film from the Duplass Brothers. Mm. They've done a lot of things before like, this that were um, indie. I indie. I mean, the Puffy, Puffy Chair, Chair. Yeah. which is an amazing, probably one of my favorite films. Just <laughs> such a relatable film. If anyone's ever gone through a relationship that's gone on too long, you know, like <laughs> the, that. That is one of those ones that like. As you just, I said, you feel, you feel well, you, right in here. well, you say they have such a strong perception of actual human mm -hmm. emotion where it's sort of like, I was like, I can relate to this movie. Mm -hmm. I so can. <laughs> um, but this is the Even one. Even cold hearted Spencer. Yes. Heart I have three a heart. sizes that yes. day. Yeah. <laughs> I am like the Grinch. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. But this is the first one that they really burst in the mm -hmm. mainstream. Mm -hmm. Since gone on to do Jeff Who Lives at Home and yes. stuff. Um, but, you know, it's it's an entertaining film. I definitely think it's worth checking yep, out. Yep, I, I definitely enjoyed it. Again, another one in 2010 for Jonah Hill. Big year for him. Very different one as well. Mm -hmm. We're going to venture into the animated realm yes. for Megamind. Mm -hmm. This is the superhero film starring Will Ferrell. As um, the villain. As the villain, whose uh, goal is to take down the hero Metro Man, played by Brad, Brad Pitt. Pitt. Mm -hmm. And... You know, that was a lot of what the trailer was. Mm -hmm. And A, you know, I'm not a huge Will Ferrell fan. So I was Which a little unfortunate. I was a little leery going into it. You know, he's he's okay. Yeah, but he definitely he go, when he misses, he misses sometimes. He goes really over the top. Yeah. Like I will give him credit. Like much like um I was telling somebody like much like Cameron Diaz, mm -hmm. uh, I was watching Charlie's Angels and I was like, you know, I don't necessarily like this movie, but I'll appreciate that she fucking left it all on the table. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with Will Ferrell, you know. Yeah. I, I gotta give him credit. He's willing to go all out for his his projects. And so True. you know, I was a little skeptical going into it. Um I didn't really like the trailer. But actually seeing the movie made me enjoy it a fair amount more. I, I thought, really liked it. I, I I thought, you know, it was a really interesting source make uh, Will Ferrell, an empathetic villain. Mm -hmm. um, it's not really about Will Ferrell versus Brad Pitt. Not that really, storyline yeah. is over fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, what does a villain do after he's achieved, you know, world domination? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have someone who's so driven on just beating the good guy, not necessarily having a goal after they've beat the good guy. Yes. And ultimately, you know, the villain becomes the hero in mm -hmm. this movie as he takes on another villain who is played by Jonah Hill. Yes. Who Jonah Hill starts out as sort of this cameraman for Tina um, Fey's Tina reporter Fey's character. Reporter character who's the love interest of both mm -hmm. um, Will Ferrell and Jonah Hill. Mm -hmm. Yes. Both both of them, neither of which Tina Fey is particularly yes. enamored with. Yes. Um, yeah, she's interested in Metro Man, who wouldn't yes. be interested in Brad Pitt. No. Um, in her. So, you know, it's it's Ultimately, things go crazy for Jonah Hill. Mm -hmm. He becomes a villain. Mm -hmm. Will Ferrell is forced to become the hero from the villain. Yes. And it's, I mean, I think Jonah Hill's character is really interesting. Titan. Yes. As he sort of evolves from this sort of like uh, sidekick nerd mm -hmm. into this uh, ill-prepared villain. Uh-huh. Who's yeah. un unaware of like controlling his Originally powers Originally like stuff. an ill-prepared hero who then turns villainous yes. due to his own yes. lust for power. And you know it's it's a decent film. I will say it comes from director Todd McGrath, Tom, Tom, Tom McGrath. Okay. Who I wasn't particularly familiar with name wise. Okay. But let me throw something at you. Uh oh. Besides Megamind, you know what he's done? <sighs> it's probably gonna be bad. Madagascar one, not just one, not just two, but all three. Mm. So this is clearly the tour de force mm. of Tom McGrath. Yeah. So if you're going to see one Tom McGrath film... See Megamind. See Megamind. Please. But... Ignore all the bad guys. One movies. side note that we're not going to get into details because I already talked about it too much. Mm -hmm. If you're going to see one animated Jonah Hill film, see How to Train Your Dragon. That's clearly the one to see. Clearly the yes. superior. So... Moving right along, yes. we're going to go to 2011. Mm -hmm. The reason why I wanted to mention this was a couple of reasons, actually. Mm -hmm. um, first up, this is one of the first instances of Jonah Hill solo driving yes. a film. Correct. This is like one of the first times he's really given the opportunity to be the lead. Not yes, like that's co -lead. the sitter. Yes, right? yes. the sitter. 
Uh, not just the Coley, mm -hmm. like a lot of films, but... Yeah, buddied up with, with another big actor. Right. And, you know. I mean, there are other side yeah. characters in the movie, obviously, but he is the lead. He's yes. the driving force. And the other thing that I really like about the film is it's reminiscent of a film that I loved growing up. Mm -hmm. Adventures in Babysitting, yes. starring Elizabeth Shue. Mm -hmm. This is sort of the male equivalent of that. Mm -hmm. Whereas Adventures in Babysitting was about a girl who's on an adventure to find her friend who's lost downtown, mm -hmm. who takes these kids with them. And with things her. go wrong, and she with her. is protective over them and yes. saves them from her and them right. from situations. This time, Jonah Hill plays a character who is essentially given the opportunity to have sex mm -hmm. with his dream girl. Yes. And wow. Unfortunately, he is stuck babysitting <laughs> that night, so he takes the kids with him on yep. this journey into, I believe, New York City to meet up with his... Yes, to hook up. So not, surprising, years old. not surprisingly, Rendezvous. Lady Babysitter in the 80s protects the kids inherently, but still has somewhat selfish goals. Mm -hmm. Relatively PG-related movie. Kids are okay. This R-rated. Well, Dude going for Nookie. <laughs> to be fair... Her goals in Adventures Wait, in Babysitting are, are fairly altruistic. Yeah, She's trying yeah, oh, to yes. save her friend. Yes. This one, he's, he's, yes, he's not so I'm altruistic. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's the other side of that coin. And that, I think, male. I think, I think this sort of speaks to sort of, I mean, and you could argue that this is sort of gender stereotyping, but it speaks to sort of more inherent qualities of men versus women. Whereas mm. women are generally more nurturing, perhaps. No, yeah, that, men, that was kind of what I was getting at, Spencer. I'm glad you picked up on my subtle yeah, nuance. Men are more <laughs> sort of self... Um, grandizing? Not grandizing. Um, self... Um, oriented? Self... Yeah. Um, Selfish? Selfish, yeah. Let's just go with selfish. selfish. Yeah. <laughs> let's stop beating around it. Just yeah, selfish. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you know, it, it's more of... For her, it was a journey into sort of um, understanding these kids and relating to them. And mm -hmm. I mean, that's the same journey for him in yeah. essence, but into sort of coming to terms with, you know, uh, relating to these kids. Mm -hmm. That that was the addition <laughs> to that journey for him. Mm -hmm. And it, I gotta say, you know, it was one of those films that I was in the minority, I saw the trailer and I was like, I think this is gonna be fun. I thought it looked pretty fun. And so well. I, I went and saw it and I thought it, I thought it was fairly funny. I mean, I think Everyone did it a good job. I mean, there's some interesting little supporting roles like uh, Max Records from mm. Where the Wild Things Are mm -hmm. pops up there. I've wondered whatever happened to him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's got uh, Sam Rockwell as the villain oh, in the movie. I love Sam Rockwell. Great, great, great actor. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a fun film. I'm not going to say it's like... The best thing ever. C Citizen Kane of <laughs> uh, babysitter movies. And it's I, not like better than Adventures in Babysitting. No, I'm not going to go so that far. But it's still, it's still fun. I good. still think it's a pretty fun... Still, fairly heartfelt movie. Ultimately, that if if you have time, check it out. Mm -hmm. I would say I would say this is worth watching just because yes. it's a fun movie. Actually, yes. so that's my two cents on that one. Mm -hmm. Again, skewing more towards the dramatic realm where I appreciate Joan yes. Hill a lot. Really flipping that coin from really the flipping that coin was Moneyball. Oh, so this good. is the story based on a true story mm -hmm. of uh, athletic, Oakland Athletics GM, mm -hmm. Billy Bean, who, you know, uh, one of my qualms with this film and the story in general is it's about Billy Bean's adaption of sabermetrics, the yes. sort of mathematical approach to baseball. Um, honestly, I haven't read the book, but it, I'm assuming it's similar to the movie in that he isn't really the one who comes up with the idea. He oh, sort no, of, not at all. He finds someone else and sort of, like, repurposes it to his... It's more like the idea of, like, um, if you if if a net, network executive took a fan theory on the internet about a television show mm. and turned the person who created that fan theory into a head writer. Yeah. it's And then said that they right. came up... They came, they, it was kind of more... It's He just kind of lifts Jonah Hill sure. up to do and the work for him. Th th my problem with it, though, is that Billy Bean has become, like... Um, Iconic and... Glorified mm -hmm. for this process, when it really wasn't him who came up with it. Yeah, but, and, you know, and Jonah Hill's character isn't necessarily the one who came up with it either. He just happens to be good at the numbers. Uh, I, I mean, uh, g uh, God, I mean, it'd probably be hard to really verify who was the first person to ever do some sort of mathematical analysis. I think there's a name for the, the Well, like, person the, who his actually... character is based upon, and I, I made sure to check this out, mm. Paul D. Potesta, okay. who went on to be, I think, a GM for the Dodgers. Hmm. Um, 
I, I mean, I, I don't know why he decided to pull his name out of hmm. having it actually referenced. Oh, they, they fictionalize him under the moniker Peter Brand okay. in the movie, which it's is who Jonah Hill, Hill played. Okay. And, I mean, obviously there's been mathematical analysis in baseball yeah. since the beginning because it's all based on statistics. Mm-hmm. But I think he was really one of the pioneers in sort I of see. the analysis portion of it in terms of players. like determining a value based mm, upon mm-hmm. their statistics instead of just looking at their statistics and being like, this is a good player. We should do something with this one. Really, you know, making a dollars and cents sort of approach to it. Well, like, you know, victory is, I mean, history is usually written by the winner, and since they didn't win, it's not. <laughs> they did win. Not the World Series, yeah, but they, they, I mean, they won 26 games, yeah. I believe, yeah. uh, consecutively. Which Sadly, is... as Mariner fans, this is really just a slap in the face. <laughs> I just actually enjoy the uh, that the I enjoy the fact that in this movie, it, all that mattered to him or to the people that cared in, above him was that he won the World Series, and it didn't matter that he did this amazing feat, or that you know with Joan Hill's character's yeah. help he did an amazing feat. I mean, that was an interesting. I mean, Aaron, of the Aaron story. Sorkin's a very talented writer. Mm-hmm. Um, Bennett Miller, very talented director. Mm-hmm. That being said, you know, I li- I liked Brad Pitt's character. Mm-hmm. I thought it was very good as Billy Bean. I like Jonah Hill a lot. Yeah. But I'm, really I'm, good straight I'm, man I'm kind okay of... with them both being nominated. I thought their roles mm. were fine. As a film, though, I was like, eh. Like, it really doesn't feel like a cohesive film hmm. to me. It's sort of like, Interesting. Uh, we're going to come up with this idea, then we're going to sort of like go onto the sidetrack of winning 26 games and then we're really going to drift back. It like never really felt very focused ba- Based to me. on a book about math statistics, I'm amazed they were able to make what they even could make out of it. Because sure. that was one of the things when they were first starting doing it, everyone was like, well, the book is just kind of about but evaluating here, numbers. Here's, so. here's the thing. like, Why don't they do something like a documentary like Freakonomics? That felt, that book, that's based on a book that's all about math. And the documentary was really interesting to sort of see realistic... Applications documentaries of the... don't generally make as much money, and they want to make money. I mean, it's called Moneyball. It's su- about playing the system with money. They're not gonna. I suppose, but you system. know, it's, it's just like it's such a vanilla film to me. I couldn't believe hmm. it got nominated for Best Picture. Like I honestly, I, I thought it was great. Uh, blah. It didn't win Best Picture, so it you should know. have should have, should have been nominated. I'm okay with the nominations for acting, but like, <laughs> really, it just felt very vanilla to me. I, I just never got into it. <laughs> I generally don't like sports bio or sports stories, but I was very entertained. Maybe that's why I was entertained because I don't care about sports. Maybe, movies. maybe you just don't have any taste. I have none. Boom! Slap. Now you have taste. I know you do. I'm just joking. Says um, the Michael Bay apologist. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Moving on to this Friday, we're talking the 27th. Mm-hmm. This is the release of The Watch, yep. starring Jonah Hill, Ben Stiller, Vince Vaughn, Richard Ayude mm-hmm. from The It Crowd. Yep. IT, IT Crowd. crowd. Um, also writer-director of Submarine, a fantastic yes. film you yep. should see. Yep. If you have not was seen. that Sif in 2011? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is... Streaming Netflix instant. This is the film written by Seth Rogen and mm-hmm. Evan Goldberg. One of the reasons why I'm intrigued by Good it. Good team. I mean, they did 50-50 as well, right? They did, didn't they? they so did a whole, a, they've done a yeah, whole bunch yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah that's one of them, though. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I we, we were talking off camera. You are not as big a, a fan of Vince Vaughn at this point. I personally think he is generally pretty good at what he does. Mm-hmm. I feel like the projects he chooses are kind of I, I can the problem. That. I think he's usually one of the better parts of them. I can understand um, that that's why people dislike people a lot like uh, Ben Affleck, because he picked a lot of bad roles for a lot of mm-hmm. years so people mm-hmm. just can't get past yeah. them sometimes so yeah uh if anything were to be faulted i would say it's probably ben stiller yeah like i i think he's a nice guy and i think he has a good heart but i i think he he's too over the top a lot I of think the time. he needs to pull himself out of being in front of the camera he just he shouldn't he's a great director you're right he's, yeah. i mean you know things like tropic thunder i thought were yeah. very well and done. He's done a lot of other things interestingly both producing and directing but i just think he I think for what he wants to be acting as he that I think that time that window for that is gone. I I, I don't, I don't that, even think that's true necessarily. That. I think he's like Jonah Hill though. I really like him when he's serious, like Greenberg. I don't mm. think Greenberg was like the best film ever, but mm-hmm. I thought he was really interesting in a sort of serious role. I really like that sort of Ben Stiller oh, as opposed to like the over the top one because he always goes so far over the mm-hmm. top. It's like it's like ever since something about Mary was pop profitable. He well, felt like every. Yeah comedy yeah. role after that he's had to be like that so. yeah yeah that's true the one example i would say that's perfect sort of 
characterization of this is dodgeball mm-hmm. and underdog story. Yes. Because Vince Vaughn, very funny, charming guy True. in that Ben Stiller, crazy, too far mm-hmm. over the top. And yes. I don't know if that's going to be the case here again. I, I'll tell you the biggest warning sign of all to me, personally, mm-hmm. is that the director is Akiva Sha- Schaefer, uh-huh. who was the director of Hot Rod. Mm. Already spoke about my dislike of that movie. Yeah, you know, I'm not, I don't know if I should blame Andy Samberg. I don't know who I should blame for mm-hmm. that one. Mm-hmm. Lonely Planet or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, you know? Lonely Island. Lonely Island. Yeah, like I don't know who's at fault for that mm. that film, but yeah, I I mean, yeah, I, I mean, just the idea of a neighborhood watch like protecting their na- area yes. from I guess aliens. I guess we should talk. That is the the it's premise like, of the film is about yeah some neighborhood watch people taking on aliens. Well, all it makes me think of is basically like. It's like 40-year-old white guys doing Attack the Block. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I was sort of thinking more like Space Invaders meets um, The Burbs. Mm. I doubt it's going to be as dark and awesome as The Burbs was. Oh, it's definitely not going to be as dark as The Burbs. No, no <laughs> doubt about that. No <laughs> I, I, doubt. That was about few, murder. There's very few movies that can get as, is, as dark as The Burbs. That is about fast. murder. Like, <laughs> this, this is not about murder. Like, or but, is it? Bum, bum, bum. Could be. Could be. But I will say there's some interesting other actors. You know, mm-hmm. Richard Ayude, very talented guy. Glad to see him getting into... Glad to see him, yeah, yeah. getting some mainstream work. Uh, Rosemary DeWitt, wonderful actress, you know, mm-hmm. recently did Your Sister Sister. Mm-hmm. Great in that. Billy Crudup, I like pretty much Billy great Crudup. in whatever he does. Yeah. I mean, very talented people. So, you know, I'm not completely sold on it, but mm-hmm. I'm holding out hope. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying, holding out hope. Yes, I am holding out hope that the three minutes of the movie that are worth it will be on the internet the week afterwards and I will see them there. Uh, there probably already are and they're that's called probably, the trailer. It's probably sadly true. Yeah. Oh god. Oh god. I weep for this movie. Yeah. So anyway, let us know your thoughts about Jonah Hill mm-hmm. and join us next time for our DVD picks for the week of July 31st. And all, as always, you can reach us at mcguffinpodcast.com twitter.com slash mcguffincast facebook.com slash mcguffinpodcast phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. Stitcher? No. We're not no. on Stitcher. iTunes. Uh, blip. <laughs> blip. <laughs> Roku. Miro. Miro. That's right, yes. Check in. Get glue. Check on in. We'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Tech, don't even try to bite the sun. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.